Hello and welcome back to Run the Atlas. Today I'm talking about the only national park in Oregon, Crater Lake. The top 10 things you need to know before visiting here. I just returned from a trip to Crater Lake and there's a number of things that I wished I'd known before visiting, so here it goes. Number one. I was really shocked to find that snow was still on the ground. They have a very long winter here at Crater Lake. In fact, it's one of the snowiest places in the entire United States. The winter here sometimes even lasts until June. So what does this mean for you? It means beware of road closures. The National Park Services recommends that you visit somewhere between May and October, which is your best bet to have open roads and clear views of the lake. Also, take note of the fire season. That typically happens in summertime, and it's also something to beware of in the surrounding area as it's very forested. Number two is hotels. The area of Crater Lake is extremely remote. As you'll see on a map, it is about a two and a half hour drive from Bend or Eugene, and it's about a 45 minute or one hour drive from nearby Klamath. And we recommend staying in Klamath. That's where we stayed. We stayed at a Fairfield by Marriott. It was very comfortable. But if you do want to stay in the park itself, they do have a lodge. And when I checked pricing, it was around $2.29 per day. And the lodging is very limited. Be sure to reserve in advance. One of the things that surprised me the most about Crater Lake versus other national parks is that there really is just one main attraction here and that is the lake. The main activity here is the Rim Road. So there's 30 different overlooks that people stop off and park and take photos. I recommend getting there a little bit early to avoid some of the crowds. We ended up getting there around 10 a.m. or so. The lake itself isn't really a recreation lake. The water is simply too cold. It averages about 38 degrees. You can go swimming here and some people do. There's a hiking trail that hikes to an area called Cleetwood Cove Trail and from there you can swim if you are up for maybe you are a Wim Hof or something. But otherwise I didn't see any people in the water, I didn't see any boats, nothing like that. The park does operate a Wizard Island boat tour from early July to early September. So check the site if you're interested in that. It does require a moderate one hour hike with a very steep drop about a 700 foot climb in order to get to the launch point of this boat. Wizard Island itself is a camp free zone so there's not a lot going on there but it would be an interesting thing to do if you have the opportunity. Other than that the recreation in the park is a little bit more limited than other national parks that I've been to. You can swim in designated areas as I mentioned. Open fire is very restricted due to the fire danger. Of course, there's hiking, there's biking, and there's stargazing because it has one of the clearest skies above Crater Lake. Next is the Visitor Center. I visited the Visitor Center on the south entrance and I was surprised to find that it was nothing more than a very basic cafeteria and a very basic gift shop. There wasn't much of a museum, there wasn't much of an explanation of the geology or history of the area. It was just very basic. So I would recommend bringing food into the park unless you are interested in a sad sandwich. Sandwich saved by Sriracha. Regarding other things to bring, definitely fill up on gas before entering the park. There's not I didn't see any gas stations in the park at all. Also, you are definitely gonna wanna bring layers because you're climbing about a 6,000 foot elevation and gotta bring some hiking shoes. I have Kaiboon boots here. Uh, in the video, I featured Salewa boots. Definitely bring some nice sturdy hiking shoes. The park also does not have internet access with the exception of the visitor center. So that's something to note is be sure to bring your map, be sure to know where you're going and have a meetup place with the other people in your group in case you get lost. 
And then there's some really interesting facts about the park, some interesting strange facts about the park. It rarely freezes. Now you would look around at all this snow thinking, this lake must freeze, but it rarely does due to its proximity to the Pacific Ocean. Another interesting mystery of Crater Lake is that it has no outlets, but it has double the precipitation than evaporation. So where does all that water go? Scientists are still exploring. They've also been said to have a number of Bigfoot sightings. You'll even see a giant statue of Bigfoot in the visitor center. So be on the lookout for the big man. So fish are actually not native to Crater Lake, which is also interesting. And Crater Lake also is known for its intense blue color. It is the deepest blue I've ever seen. And that's because this lake has no sediments, no pollution. It's just pure water. So last but not least, definitely visit Crater Lake. If you are in the Bend region, Eugene or Klamath area, there, definitely take either a day trip or a weekend trip. Get into Crater Lake, enjoy those scenic views, stop off at the panoramic vistas. So there you have it. Enjoy Crater Lake. Check out our series of Oregon. I will link it up here. We visited so many different places in Oregon. There are so many things to do in the surrounding area of Bend and Klamath. So check it out and enjoy. Hit the thumbs up button if you'd like more of these travel videos and be sure to subscribe.